Hi folks, welcome back. I'm back working on the uh, $7,000 mistake lathe. It's a Monarch TNE 1990s model. It's one of the most modern ones I've seen. It doesn't have the works in the drawer. In fact, there's no electronics down in the, in the base of the machine. It's all in this big green cabinet on the back. Uh, the reason it's a $7,000 mistake is explained in this video. My friend bought it sight unseen from a, an auction about six years ago now in Houston. And boy, he spent $7,000 on it. And when we got it over to my shop to inspect it and work on it, he wasn't happy going home. First off, the machine only goes 1400 RPMs. The electronics have been messed with. Somebody took the electronic board that controls the motor and replaced it with another motor that doesn't control all of the functions the motor needs. Thus, it's limited to very low speeds with no guts. I've got that all figured out. A couple years ago, there were some people on Practical Machinist Forum that, that retrofitted one of these motors with a system that, frankly, was pretty ingenious the way they came up and, and, and made all the components work together. They're helping me do this. Without them, I'd probably have to put a bicycle pedal over here and have Don sit here and, and make it go fast. But we got all that taken care of. In fact, I just ordered some of the parts today for that. Second thing we found was this thing had been in a crash. The first indication we had was the crossfeed wasn't working right. We took it apart and there's some pieces in there that are broken and we started grinding and getting all that back together and then I checked the spindle. The spindle was bent two thousandths of an inch. That's hard to fix. This is a precision spindle, and it was going to be about $10,000 the time I bought bearings and found another spindle for it. But luckily, one of my viewers had a spare spindle from an older machine, and it was close enough that I could make it work. In fact, if you haven't seen it, follow along up there, and you'll see what I did to make the spindle. There's absolutely no run out in this spindle now. Spindle's taken care of. So, electronics are working, spindles taken care of. We worked a little bit on the crossfeed, but now we come to another part that really needs help. This is a high precision machine, arguably one of the best small two run lays that are ever made. The bed on this. It's got seven thousandths of an inch wear in it. And I showed you in a other video somewhere up here how we can dirt down and dirty check it when you're looking at a lathe just by using this and just get an idea. It's not precise. Well, to really check it, the uh, tailstock came off and we used the base of the tailstock on its ways as a sled to measure the rails. And they are in fact seven thousandths wear in them. Now, another tip for you. When you're looking at a lathe to buy, take your finger and reach up in here and just feel the back side of that 45 degree rail. That is where the most wear is on these lathe bits. Now what happens is you have the workpiece in the spindle turning this way and then you stick a tool bit into it. Well, when you do that, the force pushes the tool bit down. And that force is then transferred to the inside of this rail. And so that's where most of the rail is. A lot of times you feel a ridge in there or just bumpiness. So, just a little tip. I know the rail's bad. And there are ways you can spend some money and, and, and tear this whole thing apart and go do it. I don't have time to tear this whole thing apart. Don't really want to. 
it's working. I don't want to go through and mess up seals and things like that or other bearings. Leave well enough alone if I can. So, this bed is hardened. It's not like a south bend or some other lays where I can take it, throw it over there on my big planer and plane this bed back to within a thousandth of an inch and then hand scrape it. You can't do that with a flame hardened bed like this. So, it has to be ground. But grinding just means using an abrasive to shape this metal. And if I send it off to a grinding house, I've sent lays off to be ground before, and they came back and they were two thousandths off. So I had to hand scrape them in. So I'd rather do it myself, you know. So i got to come up with a way of making this work. Over the years, I've seen lots and lots of people talk about, well, I don't have any money and my lay is really bad. I'm going to save it. I'm going to get the grinder out. Heck, one young guy took a hand grinder and ground the whole thing off. I don't think that's accurate enough to do what I need to do. Did it work for him? Sure, it all depends on what you're trying to make. Heck, I've worked with lathes for years that had 30 and 40 thousand square. You can make good parts with a wore out lathe. It's just not much fun. So, I've come up with a plan to do this in a little bit different way. The saddle is already off of the, the, this machine here. And I was sitting here looking at it all one day and I said, how could I make a sled to grind this? And some people would say, well, you've got these two inner rails right here. They're fine. You know, well, we don't know they're fine. And, and they are not as badly worn as, as the, uh, the main rails are. But there is some wear in them. So... The second problem with doing that is, look at my board here. Now this board's warped a little bit, so if it rocks, don't worry about that. If I put this in here, I've only got seven inches width for stability. And that's just not enough in my book. So, I can't use these rails. I don't want to use the inside rails because I don't think it'll be good in the end. But what if I took and made a wider platform and figured out some way to make that wide platform go back and forth? So that's what I'm doing. This is a little sample cross section of what I'm going to make. It's got a 45 degree or on each side to make a 90 degree angle. I'm going to make two of these. They're roughly three inches or two and three quarters tall, an inch and a half thick. And they're going to be about 48 inches long. And I'm going to mount them outboard of these rails by a good bit. These will be out here, you know. That'll give me a, at least a, a 14 to 16 inch base for a heavy duty trolley to ride on. I'm going to take and mount a bracket, drill and tap into the bed casting, two brackets on each side, and I'm going to make them where they have, they mount up to the casting, but then they have a pocket over here that holds this. So when I do that, I can then raise with a jack screw underneath this and then clamp it into position. I can move it back and forth in that pocket to get it parallel with these rails and then have the top of it all in the same plane pretty easily with some precision screw adjustments. So I think that'll work really nice to give me a very precision rail system. I'm then going to take some uh, V-wheels that I made and put two of them on this side and one on the other side. That way, as I'm rocking down the rails here, you know, four points don't define a plane. Three do. 
So with the three, I can have all of that just perfectly lined up and no one extra wheel over here hanging out in the air or getting high and making everything cattywampus. So that's what I'm gonna do. These rails, this would be a heavy inch, one inch thick aluminum platform that'll go up and down these rails. And then I'm going to grind these surfaces off. Now, this is what I'm going to use. An air powered die grinder. You can get points for these things in all different kinds. Cylindrical grinding wheels. Uh, I think what will probably be, be, probably be best is a sanding disc. Because I'm talking some places the most I have to take off is seven thousandths of an inch. And a sanding disc does a very nice job with a finish and taking off metal quickly. I'm going to use grinding wheel. I don't know which one's going to work best, but we can try them all. I'm going to take it and I'm going to make a fixture to hold this die grinder on this platform. I can take the platform and adjust this wheel to the correct angle. Here, I can adjust it at this, I can go flat, and then I can move it over via slots and do the flats. In the same way over here on this side. So I've got to come up with a way for a sled to go across here. It just has to be rigid when I attach it at the right angle. Shouldn't be any big deal at all. So that's my basic theory. The problem was finding a piece of cast iron to do this. Uh, Isaiah Covert IC Weld suggested using cold rolled. Well, I think it will bend too much. We're talking, I want this thing to be as perfect as a straight edge. So I need to use cast iron and I'm going to. Uh, uh, stress relieve it a couple times just like I do a four foot straight edge and then plane that off to where it's perfect. I don't have any cast iron to make this out of and that's where Windy Hill Foundry comes in. I'm going to leave in two days taking a little pattern I'm going to make over to Clark at Windy Hill and we're going to pour two of these rails. I'll bring them back here, put them on top of the plane, plane them off, hand scrape them if I need to, and then we'll have a system that I can use on lathe after lathe after lathe. Because uh, I just think that's a better use of my limited funds doing that than just sending something off to be ground. What do you think? I'm excited to go see Clark. Seems like a good old boy. Don has warned me to be very unsteve like around Don. He doesn't want me chasing Clark off. I think I'll be fine. Leave me a comment and see if you think it's going to work or not. I don't know what I've missed, but I'm open to ideas.